Okay, so uh, today we will uh, once again look at the uh, common drain amplifier that we have started last day. And uh, last day we have developed the small signal model of common drain amplifier, a kind of source uh, forward that you know. And today we will observe the same amplifier from a different perspective, from the large signal perspective. Now to start with, uh, let me just uh, draw the uh, corresponding uh, circuit diagram for a common drain amplifier involving a MOS. So you are going to apply the input at uh, terminal, input signal V in. Is the supply VDD, and suppose we have a resistance over here RS, and you are taking the output from this source terminal. This typical uh, common drain amplifier. The drain is connected to supply, pass supply, common drain or uh, source follower. Now, lastly, we have done this uh, both the qualitative as well as the quantitative analysis from the last from the uh, small signal model. Now, today we will observe the same thing from from the large signal perspective. <coughs> now suppose uh, my input is over here that is V in and uh, for the time being let's assume that uh, okay we will also take into account the corresponding body effect. Last thing we have neglected the body effect because as you understand that uh, the source terminal is connected to I mean from a source you have a uh, resistance over here from where you get the output. So source is not uh, kept at a fixed voltage. So as a matter of fact your threshold voltage is not constant right. So what will be your uh, gate to source voltage over there? What is the gate to source voltage? <coughs> what is gate to source is V in minus V out. Gate voltage is V in, source voltage is V out. So gate to source is V in minus V out. Okay. And uh, then uh, you can find out what is the overdrive voltage V in minus V out minus uh, VTH threshold voltage. So what is my current? So the current expression if the device uh, operates in the saturation region, then what is my current expression ID? This ID is nothing but half of mu n C ox W over L, right? And then the VGS minus VTH whole square. So V in minus V out minus VTH whole square. That is ID. If the device operates in the saturation region, half mu and C ox W over L, V in minus V out minus VTH whole square. And that current flows through RS, <coughs> right? So then what is your V out voltage then? Then this V out is given by half mu and C ox W over L. V in minus V out VTH whole square. Okay? Into, yeah, multiplied with RS. So V out is equal to I times RS. Half mu and C out W over L V in minus V out minus VTH whole square into RS. So from this large signal analysis, from this expression of this V out, we can also find out the expression for the voltage gain. How can I do that? Just uh, differentiate this V out with respect to V in, right? So here what I find, this is nothing but your del V out upon del V in. That is equal to, you have over there half mu and C ox W over L, that's a constant part. Then you have two, I can simply write this one V in minus V out minus VTH times RS and then the term inside this square. I have to differentiate this with respect to V. Okay, what is that? One second is obviously del V out upon del V in and the third component is VTH. Now the question is that whether the VTH is constant or not. No, VTH is not constant. As you change V in, obviously, uh, you have the corresponding change in V out, and therefore the V out, I mean the threshold voltage also changes with the V in, right? 
So there you have del Pth upon del P in this one. Now whenever we encounter this term del Pth upon del P that we have considered last day. Right, so this del Pth upon del P that means you are taking into account the body of it. The threshold voltage is not constant. Now how can you find it out this one del Pth upon del P? What is that? I can write this one del Pth upon del P in as del Pth del P out times del P out by del P in. Right? And then del P out upon del P in is your well known AP voltage again. And what is this del Pth upon del P out? Remember, del Pth is okay, the change in the threshold voltage. What is this V out? So V out is nothing but your the source potential. And body, typically for NMOS, the body is connected to the ground terminal. So I can write that this V out, this V out is nothing but your VSB, source to body potential. V out is equal to VSB. So what is the what is the expression del VTH upon del VSB, if you can remember? Eta. Eta upon del VSB is nothing but eta. Right. So this expression ultimately equivalents to eta times AP, right, del Vt is upon del V in. So then what I can find AP is equal to, then can I identify this term, uh, mu and C ox W for L and then this term, V in minus V out minus Vt, what is that? That is basically the GM term, right, mu and C ox W for L and then the water, mu and C ox W for L and then the water voltage, is nothing but your GM. So half into two that gets cancelled, then you have gm there present, gm rs I can write. What else? 1 minus av minus eta av. Right? av is equal to gm rs into 1 minus av minus eta av. Okay. So mm, that is equal to gm rs minus one plus eta times A V times G M R S. Clear? So then if I take this A V in that side then AV into 1 plus eta times CMRS. Let me add a page. So what I get? AV is equal to GMRS minus you have 1 plus eta times AV times CMRS. So if I take AV in one side it becomes 1 plus 1 plus eta times GMRS that is equal to GMRS. So ultimately AP is equal to GMRS by Is it okay? Yeah, AB there, GMRS one minus AB minus eta times AB. So GMRS minus 1 plus eta AP times GMRS Yes Okay Then how can this uh, AV vary with uh, your input voltage be in? 
How can this this AP value? GMR is divided by one plus one of one plus eta times GMR is. So one one is GMR divided by the hmm. Now if I have a variation, the gain versus input voltage. AV gain versus input voltage. How does it vary? How does it vary? Gain versus as you change the input voltage V in, as you change the input voltage, how does this particular AV vary? As long as gain is less than the threshold voltage, what is the gain? Zero. As long as gain is less than the threshold voltage, the gain is zero. If I mark over here, this is my threshold voltage VTH, so the gain should be zero. Right? Beyond this point, what happens? Beyond this point, what happens? Can we remember the expression for eta? Eta can we remember? Is it constant? So for the timing, let's assume that it is constant, but it is not also constant. It's also a function of your uh, this uh, source potential. Right. That eta, if you can remember, that eta was something like plus Vsp mod. Obviously, it is related. <laughs> eta is the it, that is the formula gamma upon two square root of mod of twice five plus Vsp. What is that Vsp? Vs minus Vb. Source minus body. The source potential is nothing but voltage. They are related. So as input increases, because it's a source follower, until it's a source follower, the source terminal will follow the the input, right? So as input increases, the source potential also increase. So as your input increases, you expect that the input. But for the time, let's assume that it is constant to some extent. But what could have been the maximum possible value for AB over here? What can we expect? If n is very large, what could have been the maximum possible value for your uh, this AB? One by one by one plus eta. So ultimately. So this is my 1 by 1 plus eta. Remember that value is obviously less than It should be less than 1, right? So as long as V is less than Vth, uh, your uh, gain is 0. And V exceeds Vth, that means your device is on. And then ultimately it reaches 1 upon 1 plus eta. And remember, eta also drops with Okay. So you can't take uh, say let's assume that the eta value is equal to say say 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. Uh, Accordingly, you have like 1 by 1.2 something like that, 0.8 or 0.9. That's the highest possible gain that you can have from this uh, common uh, drain amping uh, or source follower, right? Hmm. Now, so that analysis that we have performed today uh, using uh, the large signal model. And last year, we used a small signal model. And during that time, we have neglected what? We have neglected body effect. Now, this time, we have included the body effect. Right? Now, we can also do the same thing. Now, once again, let's have. Let's once again. I mean, the circuit diagram for this common drain amplifier involving a discrete register for the time being. So, I applied the input at this particular point, the gauge. And uh, your output is obtained from this terminal, right? Now let's draw the small signal model incorporating the the body. Now you have uh, three terminals there: gates, source, and drain. Now you apply the input over there. V in. 
between gate to source suppose this voltage is your v1 and between drain to source you have a voltage dependent current source gmv1 okay you have a resistor you have a resistor between source to ground rs okay You should have another voltage dependent current source that is GMP VBS. GMP. So what is your VBS here? So VBS is nothing but VB minus VS. So that is minus V out. Okay. So. have another voltage dependent current source gmb minus v out like this but this is your up terminal and drain is connected to ac ground right yeah now this particular current source this particular current source <coughs> this is connected between two terminal one is the source second one is the drain drain is connected to ac ground right so this particular current source so forget about the direction what is the magnitude of the current source that is gmp times v out right gmb times v out and this current source is connected between two terminals whose voltage difference is equal to v out okay so something like that suppose you have two terminals say point a point b Now between these two, you have uh, a current source whose magnitude is given by K times V A B. Okay, K times V A B. The current source is connected between two terminal whose magnitude is nothing but some scalar multiplied version of the voltage difference between these two terminal. Right. So can I simply represent that particular current source? By some simpler element, resistance, right? So here also you have GMB times V out, right? This is connected between two terminal whose voltage difference is equal to V out. So this is nothing but a resistance. What is the resistance? One upon GMB. Okay. So that makes the calculation even more easier than your small signal model looks something like that you have v1 there between drain to source you have gm times v1 you have some resistance connected over there rs this is grounded and between source terminal to ac ground another resistance whose magnitude is given by 1 upon gm and uh, you have connected the input between the gate and ground or gate and the drain here yeah. because drain is connected to ac ground okay so whenever sometimes you might be having this uh, simple register is not there this resistance can be implemented by some say, current source load, not a simple discrete resistor. This is a current source load, right? So in that case, if you observe, okay, the, there is a, a body effect present in case of your common drain amplifier or uh, source follower, then the body effect can be represented by means of a simple resistor. And that is true only for this common drain amplifier.
not for other types of amplifier. Because here you have noticed that the volt, the, the corresponding, uh, the current magnitude, the magnitude of the current source is nothing but some k times the voltage different between those two terminals that the current source is connected. So I can simply represent, so that makes our calculus even more easier. That means it is nothing but uh, a simple resistor. So minus 1 by j will be 1. Minus, the direction will be something like that. So instead of having GMA V out in that direction, what I can write? This is equivalent to GMB V out upwards. GMB V out upwards. So one upon GMB, right? Now what happens? Uh, we are going to make it more complicated. That means uh, the RS is not a simple uh, discrete register. Rather, you have uh, say. Uh, the current, this RS is represented by some say uh, current source uh, kind of load, and that current source might be either NMOS or by PMOS, which makes the complication even more. Uh, I mean, the calculation even more. Complicated. The complications are more, right? So in that case, in order to ensure that our cal uh, calculations are not that tedious, now let's observe this from a different perspective. Let Let's now uh, find out the corresponding equivalent uh, uh, model. Of this uh, common train amplifier. How can I do that? I am having this common train amplifier involving only two elements. What are those two elements? What are those two elements? In the common train amplifier, if I forget about the RS, I am having only two elements. You have one upon GME there, and you have this. GM times V1, that current source, voltage dependent current source. Right. Now I would like to find out the corresponding Thevenin equivalent circuit for that. What I have? I have between gate to source, I have this V1, and between drain to source, I have this GM times V1. This is connected to AC ground, and there you have applied the input signal. Apart from that, you have some RS, you have some resistance 1 upon GM. I would like to find out the Thevenin equivalent circuit of this enter. What is the mechanism? How can I find out the Thevenin equivalent model? Forget about this 1 upon RS and 1 upon GMP. Okay, these were there in parallel. How to find out the Thevenin equivalent? I mean, so you have to find out, you need to, yeah, you have to find out this Thevenin equivalent voltage and resistance. This terminal, this source terminal, and between this. So what is the mechanism? First of all, you have to disconnect this one, you have to disconnect this model from the rest of the circuit. Right? You have to disconnect this. Then, the thing is that, if you disconnect now, here you find, so this RS and this 1 upon GM is not there. You have to disconnect this from the rest of the circuit. Okay? Then, what is the magnitude of the current there? GM, V1. Right? Now, since you have disconnected, so since RS and 1 upon GM is not present, so the current has nowhere to go. Right? So therefore, the GM V1 term is equal to zero for the, thermal, for the calculation of the thermal equivalent mode. Now, if this is equal to zero, that means GM is not zero, so V1 has to be zero, right? Then what is your? So if I consider, okay, this voltage equal to your VTH, that voltage over there. So what is that? V1, V in is equal to V1 plus VTH. If I simply apply KVL over there, V1 plus VTH and for the calculation of the Thevenin equivalent model, your V1 equal to 0? So V equal to VT, the VT is equal to V. 
right? What are the thermal equivalent resistance? How to find it out? It's not infinite. It's not infinite. You have to kill. Too early for the next class. Hmm. You have to apply the external voltage, measure the current, find out the ratio, and if nothing about it, one upon GM. Right? Because that current we consider, that current is nothing but that voltage. So therefore, one upon GM. So, so ultimately, what you have, the thermal equivalent model is something like this. So this is your Vm, the applied uh, thermal voltage, and then what else? VTH, if I call it RTH, so understand that this VTH is nothing but your V in and this RTH is nothing but your 1 upon GM, right? And then you are connecting this entire thing to the rest of the circuit, okay? So, you have, this is basically grounded. Be out there. Another RS is there. One by GMP are parallel. One by GMP parallel. Now sometimes this RS is not represented by a simple RS, this can raise. Rather, you have rather you have this RS is represented by another current source flow. Let it, let it be an N MOS, right? So in that particular case, what you have, you don't have a simple discrete register like this. Rather, this register is also represented by means of another N MOS. It will be PP biased with VP, V in there, VDD, and you are taking the output from this terminal, right? Let me call this MOS as M2, this MOS as M1. Now suppose this is your complicated circuit, right? Now you would like to find out the, uh, the gain. And remember, in that case, you can also incorporate the, uh, your, so far you have neglected the channel and modulation. You can also include the channel and modulation. Right. So that RS is nothing but your R. Okay. So first of all, you have to identify that, okay, M1 is my amplifying MOS. And M2 is acting as a load MOS. Current source load. Right. And for M1, what you have for M1, you have the effect of what? The body effect is there for M1, not for M2. Right? Then what will be the uh, corresponding small signal model? What will be the small signal model? Which model? Which uh, GMRS by 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 plus integer. This time RS is not a simple RS. Yeah, RS to one not two. Yes. So we have to draw the corresponding small signal model first. G1, D1, S1. Okay, between G1 to S1, suppose this voltage is V1, and here 
you have gm1 times v1 what else what else the body fit is there you understand that d1 is connected to ac ground d1 is connected to ac ground now for m1 you should have for m1 you should have r not one is there and apart from that what else for body effect you have already seen that this is nothing but your gm v times uh, that gm times vgs and gm v times vgs and that can be simply represented by means of one resistor connected between the source and source and ac ground right so this is nothing sorry so this is nothing but your one upon gmb1 okay what else between drain one and source one between drain one and source one if not one and drain one is connected to ac ground so this resistance r01 so that i am i am also incorporating the channel length modulation so r01 should be there right what else what will be the impact of this m2 only r02 anything else what is that what is that m2 what is that m2 is it similar to some other device that you have already encountered in some of the books it's not exactly degenerated kind of thing yes for m2 if you look this m2 so that m2 is uh, i mean uh, so they already have found that okay the gate is having some voltage vb source is uh, grounded right in the actual model but in the small signal model what you have will be bit grounded or yes that means both gate and source so g2 and g2 and s2 both of them are connected to ac ground that means what gate and drain ac wise they are having the same voltage same potential that means what they are so that kind of device you already encountered that is the common one that is already found dc wise you have different voltages no dc wise you have different voltages it is there but ac wise the small signal model the gate and drain they are shorted gate and drain they are shorted so you have encountered this kind of device previously that is called a direct connected load a direct connected load right so drainage so drainage drainage source current drainage source current current drainage current oh here yeah sorry so here you have considered okay so i thought that it's a like of uh, your uh, It's not a PMOS. It's not a PMOS. It's not a PMOS. Yeah, it's not a PMOS. Anyway, so uh, how can we represent this uh, M2 then? R not two. R not two only. Is any other effect? No. M2 then the body. Source is grounded. Source is grounded. So we have R not two. One upon GMB two, yes or no? Okay. One upon GMB two. No. What is the capacity? No one upon GMB two. And what about one upon GM two? Will there be no one upon GM two? No. Cancel. Only this. Okay. Then uh, what will be the voltage gain? How to find out the voltage gain? So in order to calculate this one now, yeah, so obviously you have to apply the input over there. Beam. Output source. 
how you apply the corresponding thermal equivalent model. Okay. So from here to here, from here to here, you have 1 upon gm1 and then the rest of the part. So what will be the expression for the voltage gain? Hmm. So actually what is the expression for the voltage gain? The expression was something like that. The expression was the A B is G M R S divided by one plus GM plus GMB times RS, isn't it? GMRS divided by, if I incorporate the, I mean, uh, uh, body effect. So, GMRS divided by 1 plus GM plus GMB times RS. So, this time, you have to identify what is your, so what you can do is, uh, you can also uh, divide center thing uh, by RS. Yes. So, that means this is nothing but your if I divide this by Rs, 1 by Rs plus Gm plus Gmp. Gmp divided by Gmp divided by Gmp. That you can also do. Gmp divided by Gmp divided by Gmp divided by Yes, you can also do that. Rs divided by 1 by Gm plus 1 plus Gmp by Rs. So, here you have Rs. Here you have Rs. 1 plus eta. Right. But it is better if you if you look at this circuit from that particular perspective that you, you using your thermal equivalent model, if you would like to find out the corresponding basic expression. Now suppose I would like to modify this circuit instead of having an NMOS over there, suppose I would like to replace this NMOS by means of a PMOS. What advantage I am getting if I replace this one? That means upper MOS is of N time, lower MOS is of P time. voltage and let us assume that this is connected to DC ground and for PMOS this is connected to supply VDD, it is different. And let it be connected to ground. This one is your first MOS M1, this one is the second MOS M2. Now, what modification do you expect here? This is what you expect. Nah, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? What do 
Lower one is B MOS. Right. Get, drain. Gap and drain. So, the R0 now, R0 2 now, 1 by GM2 parallel. 1 by GM2 parallel. Is it only 1 by GM2? No. What do you have to say? What do you have to say? Last time you have, in the last circuit, you have this M2 was present, and but for M2 there was no body. Because source is connected to uh, AC ground, and rather DC ground, and uh, the bulk is also connected to uh, zero, zero voltage. So there was no body effect for M2. Right. But this I have this M2 if I consider that particular uh, MOS. So get drain. We are short it. Direct connected device. Right? And uh, so for dark net device, what is, what's the equivalent resistance? If I just consider all the second order bit. Yes. So that is equivalent resistance from V out to ground. And for the upper MOS, do you have any other effect? Uh, but okay, you have the body effect there. Oh, no, same thing. Body effect present? No. Yes or no? No, no. It's an end MOS. The body is connected to ground, and here the body is connected to mini DVD. For M1, the body is connected to ground, and for M2, the body is connected to mini DVD. Same thing. Okay? So, if you draw the small signal model. Okay, let me once again just show you this part. G1, D1, S1. GMB times? PBS, GS, and GMB times PBS, and here your gate and train they are sorted together. Okay, and suppose this voltage is equal to your so GMB times PBS. So what is this PBS? What is CBS then? G1, D1, S1. Let's uh, let's consider the first MOS. Let it be. So suppose some arbitrary MOS M1. Gate and drain they are shorted. Gate and drain they are shorted. Let it be M2. Okay. So gate and drain they are shorted. DC by shorted. Between drain to source, you have GM1 times V1, and V1 is your gate to source voltage. And then this V1 must be negative. It should be negative. That means this S1 is having higher voltage than G1. G1 is already grounded, so this voltage is always higher. This is at a higher voltage as compared to this voltage, gate voltage, right? What is GPS then? DBS minus 
minus not v out v s means what so v s1 is what minus of v1 v1 is equal to 0 na v1 is equal to 0 so with respect to that what is v s1 if it is 0 that defines is v1 so it's minus v1 so what is your v s sorry v b s V B S. Zero minus V S one. That means V one. So you have G M one times V one and G M B times instead of writing G M B V B S, what I can write? Basically, it's a G M B times V one. Okay, and between train to source, you have. RO1 or RO vector. Right? That is equivalent model. Now I am going to find out the distance. So what is that distance? You have to connect some, you have to connect some uh, external voltage. Let's connect some external voltage like this. Outside. That will be Vx. Suppose this kind is Ix. That means what? You have GMV, so what is the what is the relation between V1 and Vx? Equal, no? Equal. Here V1 and Vx are equal. Equal? So this kind is your so this this is your G, GM1 times Vx, GM2 times GMB times Vx, and then you have this RO1. Uh, the resistance there Rx. So what is the given resistance then Rx? So you have this trace of GM1 V1, and what is the a voltage dependent between these two terminal. Once again, you have the same concept. Between these two terminal, D1 and S1, what is the voltage difference? V1. Right? Or rather, you can call it like uh, Vx. Between this terminal and this terminal, what is that voltage? You can call it either you call it V1 or you call it Vx. So, the magnitude is Gm1 times that voltage. So what is the given resistance? One upon GM1. So one upon GM1, you have one resistance. Yes. And another resistance is one upon GMB. One upon GM, one upon GMB, and another resistance, R. Right? So what is that? Rx. One upon GM1 parallel one GMB parallel. R1. Typically, this is this can be approximated to one by GM1 parallel with one of one by GMB or let it be GM only. Okay, anyway, no problem. One upon GM1 parallel one upon GMB. Since R1 is typically large. If not, then you have to incorporate all these things. Then this is so ultimately this M2, this combination from here to here. So previously we have a resistance RS and we have started our discussion with that resistance. GMRS by 1 plus 1 plus eta times GMRS. Now this time make a note that this RS is not a simple RS. This RS is represented by another either an NMOS device. In the last case we have considered an NMOS device. And this time we have considered some PMOS degrees as a load, current source load, to bias the difference. And accordingly, you need to find out the expression for uh, the voltage. And while doing so, you must remember that the corresponding uh, your uh, small signal model involves 
two parameters. If I, if I consider the, the Thevenin equivalent uh, model, then you have this Vn over there, and you have another resistance that is nothing but your 1 upon Gm. Right? And 1 upon Gm, may for this case, whenever I consider uh, source follower or common drain amplifier in that case, this Gm bit time is VBS that can be simply represented by a, a single register connected outside between the output terminal to the ground terminal. Right, so this is simple one, one upon GMT. But that is not the case for any other model. If I consider common source topology or common gate topology, that time you, you don't have this one upon GMT on. This is only true for the common drain amplifier, a source follower amplifier, for which uh, this uh, the current magnitude, this GMT times GBS, is nothing but the some constant multiplied with the voltage between these two terminals. So that is actually equivalent to some resistor that is equal to 1 upon G. And that makes your life little bit easier. And then you consider the other, other, other resistors uh, present over here. Uh, you can have some uh, another additional resistors over there from this V out to as a load resistance between V out and, and AC ground. And then you consider this in parallel. And all this, uh, this uh, common drain amplifier from this uh, Thevenin equivalent model, then it is easier for you to analyze the circuit. Can you get the point? Okay, so uh, with this, we have come to the end of your uh, this uh, uh, CO1, which involves uh, the common source, gate, common drain, the cascode kind of thing, amplifier, and then uh, hopefully the next class will solve some problems. And then uh, we'll move to the preferably to the unit number uh, in last unit, which involves uh, the frequency response of uh, this uh, single stage amplifier.